Yes. Now, we'll have one. Again, we're going to have a rectangular hole, but we'll still have ice. Gotcha. So they don't have one that... Oh, I see. I see. One is on the middle. Uh-huh. So the hold-up posts are not installed. Huh? They're not. They're tied into it. Right. Okay. That's what they tie, too, but the posts themselves are not there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wow, this is just amazing. Rail systems will hold our umbilicals and the axis and stuff. Right here. We've got one there, one here, and we've got one around the corner. Good. And being as it's a rail, that allows us that allows us to transition oh. from Harry to SLS. Ah, because you can just go further up. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, what height were the caps on? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got that? You got it right here? Uh, the Aries stops like the top one. It's going to be a couple down. And we can actually look and see the uh, back pokey balls, which is another kind of connection to the back of the system. For access on the most of the If you look over the other side, you would have seen a porch. Well, about the same way. See, there's no hole on the end. All the way on the other side? No, I mean, if you look over the left, you'll see it on the back porch. You can just come out and make it easier. Oh, oh, I gotcha. Yeah, so that's when they hopped out. I'm with you. So it'd be over here. There, there it is. That's it, yep. So in the Aries version, they pop out here. Run across the back That would be Aries. What kind of one do you have now? Are there anything? One of our challenges is we've got Talks about a 21st century. That's what's going to get us the gate. They're up. 
I mean, you can you can you let your imagination run wild. Ideally, you know, you'd like to say, okay, anything that has a human in it is going to launch from Launch Complex 39. Uh, if it's going to have cargo, we're going to launch it from the Cape side, and, and that may be where we come down. Because DoD is looking just as we are at ways to modernize their activities, ways to streamline, and cut down on the cost. And if you decide that that's the way you want to do it. Uh, you could go to a single control. Right now we've got control rooms on the Cape side and control rooms right down in the LCC. There's nothing that says you can't just have a single launch complex, launch control center, and do it on either side. The, the controllers don't have to see anything. In fact, we don't let them look up. We don't let them look out the window, unfortunately, during the launch. So they, they're just looking at their console. So there are a lot of things that we think we can do, and we're probably going to do. And the other thing is just, just listening to industry tell us, you know, take their ideas about ways to make things easier to work with. We don't have a corner on the market. It, it's, it's exciting to come down here and watch the teams work. It is great. Thank you. Where, who are you with? I'm with the NASA. NASA ah, the okay. Bit, not too much, you know, you get close, these ships are pretty fast. We can pinpoint the landing a lot better, obviously, than Apollo, so we're landing within, I don't know, a mile of where we expect to be, so they have a pretty good chance of being really close. And, and, if we, and if we're a long way away, of course, they can pull them out, too. Yeah. What's the crew size of this uh, So the flight test, uh, after that, we, uh, the, the nominal size is four. We may fly, you know, we'll still have to work that out with Gerson Meyer. We maybe just fly two for a flight test where you don't need everybody. And then just, just enough to exercise the system so we have to turn around. It's built for the first one. So the, the first flight on SLS in 2017, is that crewed or unmanned? Uh, it'll be unmanned. And then you fly an, another one with people on it? Yes. And what year would that happen? We're still working that out with the budget. Okay. Part of what we're doing is to see how much of the development we can get done before 17. 
right. so that we could be in a, in like qualification like AA2 kind of things we needed to say we've done before we put somebody on it. Right. So we're trying to make it as close to 17 as we can, but it'll be driven by the budget, and that's what we're working on the first time. Okay. So it, would it be closer to 17 than 21? <laughs> it's. I know we can do better than 21, and that's what we're trying to work out with the bill. Okay. And so would you do an unmanned orbital test and then call it operational, or...? Uh, operational is a tricky word. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you could do, I think we do the unmanned test on SLS, which says we've flown and exercised all the major systems in the environments we expect to see. And if we see no, if we see no surprises, right. then that means we've lined up all our ground testing then, confirms everything we did on the ground to qualify the system, then we'll be ready for the home. And go do something. Yeah. Well, okay. so the first one, right, we'll do a flight test, which is just to exercise the systems, just like they did in Apollo. Right. Over today, we're talking about actually flying those folks around the moon. And a test around the moon, so we're testing TPS, testing ECLS for that longer duration, yeah. and then and then we're working with Bill and others to see, okay, what's the mission after that? That's part that's still there. And so that would be the the mission in 2021 would be the first with people looping around the moon. Okay. Yeah. And bu budget aside, how how quickly can you turn around from say your your orbital test flight to an operational mission? Or Technically, I don't think there's any reason why we couldn't do it within a year. You know, the systems are there, and that gives you enough chance, maybe even earlier, that gives you enough chance to look at the test data that you did on the unmanned flight and make sure you didn't find any surprises. So technically, you can do it much quicker than that. It's really driven by the budget as far as how far. Okay. That's really cool. we start heading down, we can yeah. keep okay. In the event of an emergency, they would have gotten out of the capsule and gone down the line. And, right and then, you would, then you'd have to run it with a piece of sugar. The new SLS system, you would have to retrain or approach to egress. Okay, so you're not necessarily going to do the roller coaster. Not necessarily. Um, but it's an option. Yes. Uh, the Ares only had one elevation where the crew would ever be. Right. And this rocket has a, a family of versions, some taller than others. So on the SLS, we're going to have to trade it again to decide what's the best technical answer to uh, egress where the altitude might change. Okay. But anyhow, this would be the back porch in the constellation configuration. Uh, I think I'm supposed to take this off. This would be the uh, elevation station. Yeah, don't, don't focus in on the back. <laughs> oh, oh, I did that first, so I got na your name so I can write it down. For All right. Like, but no, I don't share it with the Russians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess, uh, What's Chinese your title, the, sir? I'm uh, actually Larry Schultz, Deputy Project Manager from Mobile Launcher. Deputy Project Manager for Mobile Launcher. Yes. Okay. Or more casually known as Larry's Deputy. <laughs> but anyhow, this is the uh, level that would have lined up with the uh, Mercy Egress system. Then it makes sort of a, a neat place to have a, a look for some. So where would the rocket be? Over there. The rocket would be over here. You'd be looking right at the crew access arm, which right. held it stuck straight out to the cap. Okay. Okay. And how far? Up there. How, how long is the mobile access? How far? How long is the access? Well, we'll be able to see here. Uh, I'm not going over that. Long. You can see the uh, the rocket base, or where the rocket base would be, right over here. Is that that white square? The white square. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah, it's only a cable. I mean, you get a little yeah. more used to it. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that's where the rocket would be. Not many. So uh, the rocket is actually, for the SLS, going to move away about eight or nine feet. Okay. Just because of the uh, geometry of the uh, low burn members down there. Okay. And so you're going to have, uh, you know, different heights of this rocket, this space on Shutsky. So how do you deal with or with access to the uh, MP or C B or Orion? Orion. Good. Orion. Orion. Don't make this quick. Um, one thing that we did on the uh, initial design is use these rail systems. We've got one here, one here, and this is mostly for worker access arms and umbilical systems. And we have a rail on the side also, mm -hmm. which we would use for our crew access arms. So we will be able to reconfigure the crew access order by holding it higher or lower on the rail system. Okay. 